In this tutorial, I'm going to show how you can easily remove an unwanted noise from an audio track using Adobe Audition CC 2014. In this example, you can see the spots where the noise occurs along the, wave, uh, along the timeline in waveform view. Here's one spike, here's another, and here's another. I'll play, the, I'll play a couple of seconds of this clip so you can hear it. There, that thumping sound that just passed one second is the, the noise that I'm referring to. That thumping sound you're hearing at 109 in the timeline is the noise from my monopod which I want to remove. In this example you can see the noise in the waveform view but that's not always true and in any case to use the healing brush you need to have the spectral frequency display showing. There are several ways you can display the spectral frequency display. One way is to come up here to this icon and just click it. That turns on this display down here. I won't say much about this uh, display except to note that it does show the timeline along the horizontal axis as usual, but along the vertical axis are the different frequencies that are contained in your audio track. I also want to show that you can toggle this off by clicking that icon again. You can also turn on the spectral frequency display by coming down to this divider bar at the bottom and dragging up and you can make the display as tall or as small as you like. You can also drag it bound to hide it. You can also double click to display it again and double click to collapse it. Okay, I'm going to open it up because that's where we're going to be working. I'm going to make it large because that's the main thing that we're going to be concerned with. Here you can see the thumping noise in the spectral frequency display as these yellow areas along the bottom of the display. We have the two channels here, left and right, and it's the same in both channels in this case. They're along the bottom because they represent low frequencies. If this had been the ringing of a bell, for example, these, uh, no the noise would come up higher in the display, maybe at 3 kilohertz or 5 kilohertz, uh, all just depending on the particular sound that you're concerned with. Now before I start editing, I'm going to zoom into my timeline so I can see the noise more clearly in the spectral frequency display. I'll just drag this bar across until I'm getting mostly just a couple of seconds around the noise. This, can, this uh, zooming in process can also be helpful when you're trying to locate where in the display your noise shows up. Zooming in to just the second or two where you're hearing the sound can make it show up much more clearly, just as it does here. Now that I'm zoomed in, I can see this little thumping pattern even more clearly. And also, importantly, this will allow me to work on it more precisely with the spot healing brush. Okay, I'm going to do that now. First thing I'm going to do is move the current time indicator out of the way so it's not... Uh, obscuring my view at all. And now I've got the spot healing brush uh, selected, the tool selected. This looks just like it does in Photoshop. And if I, and you can in fact increase or decrease the size uh, of the brush by hitting the left and right bracket keys. Here I'm hitting the right bracket key to make it larger and the left bracket key to make it smaller. And again if you're a Photoshop user that will be very familiar. So I'm going to set what I think is an appropriate size, and then I'm going to come down here, and I'm just going to start painting it out. So I'm going to take that, and then it runs for a second, and now notice that the yellow is mostly gone. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to do the same thing, and it computes for a second, and then it's gone. I'm going to come over here and do it one more time for this first occurrence of the noise. Now if I play this back, you'll notice that the thumping noise is pretty much gone, but you can still hear a little blip. I'll play it now. You, guys are going behind. you can hear the blip just as she's talking. Let me play that again and so you can hear the so you can listen for the blip. Let me go back to the beginning and play. You guys are going behind. It's much, uh, it's much less obtrusive now, but I'd still like to get that blip out. As I look at the spectral frequency display, I can see that there's a band of yellow just above where I was previously working. It's right about here, and it's in both channels. It's at a higher frequency than the thumps, and I'm going to take a guess that this is the area that needs more work. I'm not sure about that, and sometimes it takes some trial and error, but I'll try cleaning this area now and see how it sounds. I'm going to increase the size of my spot healing brush by pressing the right square bracket key. And as you can see, the, that brush is getting bigger. So now I'm going to just go ahead and then paint out this band of yellow. And as before, it works on both channels at the same time. It calculates and now it's gone. 
Okay, so let me back up here and play and see how that sounds. Okay, that sounds to me like the, the blip is completely gone. Let me play back again. Okay, the blip is gone. I can hear that it is affecting the sound of her voice a little bit. So I might want to play with that. I might want to make the sound of my brush a little, the size of my brush a little smaller and try again. I might want to move around in the frequency display and try to get it pinpoint just exactly the area that's making the sound of the blip. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to say that's close enough. So that shows how you can identify a sound using the display and you can mostly or and sometimes entirely remove a sound depending on how distinct it is and how different it is the, the, from the other frequencies in your audio track.